It's Monday, March the 11th, 2013, and let's talk about what happened this weekend over at xdadevelopers.com. It was a bit of a short weekend at XDA, so this is gonna be a relatively quick video. First up, if you are addicted to flashing your device to new ROMs or flashing when new updates come out or something like that, this first story might be for you. There are a lot of ways now that you can very easily flash to new ROMs, but the majority of them involve pushing the file over to your device, going into your recovery of choice, and then running the update from there manually. But XDA4 member Richard da, 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 has created a script called Auto Flasher that is just the right thing for you, perhaps. This is a very lightweight script, actually an Android app that you can get from the Google Play Store that will search through your device, wherever you've put it, and find files that are compatible with being flashed to the device. You can select as few or as many as you want to flash at the same time. You can flash, you know, ROMs and kernels and other mods of some sort to the, at the same time. The only downside to this is you must be running twerp on your device. You cannot be using Clockwork Mod. Simply because Clockwork Mod, according to the app description, has to have encrypted files from ROM Manager Premium and will only work with that. So that's a bit of a bummer if you're not using Twerp, but it might be something worth checking out if you are or if you've wanted to switch. One way or the other, the app is free, so do make sure to check out the forum thread and just see if it's something you might be interested in taking a look at. Additionally, another app was featured on the XDA portal this weekend. You know that more often than not, when you pick up one of these devices to take a picture with it, you're you know shaking around and you're moving and you're trying to do it one-handed or whatever, you're gonna end up with blurry shots. Well, thanks to XDA member Standy66, you may not have to throw every one of those photos away. He's created an application he's calling Deblur It, which uses deconvolution technology to try to unblur your photos. I actually tested this out earlier on my device. I tried to take a photo that was actually taken kind of blurry and tried to deblur it. It didn't seem to do much good, and it says that it's only compatible, the free version is only compatible with photos up to 1024 by 1024, so not exactly <laughs> useful. For, for the average cell phone camera. There's also a pro version that it says is a just support version that is supposed to give you more options and I don't know. If it's not gonna give me the functionality in the free version and then give me more functionality later on, it's not gonna be useful to me. But you may wanna try it out and see how it works for you. Honestly, the photo that I tried to deblur, like I said, it didn't really look like it did a whole lot to it and it would not save it after the fact. So I'm guessing it has to do with the fact that the photo I tried to do that to was from a cell phone camera that was higher than 1024 by 1024. You would figure, if nothing else, that it, if it deblurred it, it would leave it at 1024 by 1024 instead of trying to not do anything. So I didn't have a very good experience with it myself. That doesn't mean that you won't I don't know, read through the forum thread. The APK is out there. You can also get it for free from the Play Store, so uh, give it a shot. And the next story might come as a bit of bad news, depending on your standpoint and your device list. Over time, things do have to come and go, and as such, we have some forums that we're gonna have to close on the XDA site. The decision was made last year that device forums that were just completely underutilized for very old legacy devices were not gonna be supported anymore, so they were just gonna be closed off. And so, unfortunately, the following device forums have been closed on the XDA site. The Motorola Flipside, the Kyocera Zio M6000, the Notion Inc. Atom, which actually kind of digs at me. That was one of the first tablets I was really interested in. Uh, the Elocity A7, the Samsung Galaxy Spica i5700, the Samsung Focus 2, the Samsung Mesmerize, the Toshiba Thrive, the Acer F1, and the Microsoft Key, or KI. So if you have one of those devices, I do apologize for the forum being closed. I honestly have nothing to do with it, so I'm not the one you should talk to if you have a problem with that. But like I said, it mostly had to do with the device forums being completely underutilized, so it is kind of understandable, I suppose. And of course, the last thing to mention, if you have not seen it already, another video was posted to XDA TV this weekend from XDA TV newcomer Jace. This video was the first in apparently a series on careers in Android, how to get started and where to go. He interviews a bunch of different developers with a lot of information on how they got into the business and what they would recommend for new coming developers in, in getting involved with Android. So do make sure to check out his video, leave him some feedback and, and let him know what you think about the video and about his presentation style and everything. But anyway, that's gonna be about all from me for today. Like I said, it was gonna be a short video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like button down below Below if you like this video and subscribe to receive our content as soon as it becomes available. But thank you so much for watching anyway, and I will see you again on Friday.